Welcome to Level Up Real Estate Investing Podcast with Robert Heider. Robert Heider. This is a no-fluff podcast where we dig deep into the journey of scaling your real estate investing and wholesaling business and discuss how to break into commercial real estate investing. Robert Heider here with Level Up Real Estate Investing Podcast. For those who don't know me, I'll go through my journey a little bit here. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, a lower middle class family, first member of my family to traditionally go to college. Um, out of college, I got into commercial real estate finance. Um, it worked out really well. I was one of the youngest vice presidents of commercial real estate lending in St. Louis at the age of 25. During my time, I underwrote over a billion dollars in commercial real estate deals. Um, and then transitioned into full-time entrepreneurial real estate investing in 2013. Uh, when I got into uh, real estate investing personally, I focused more on real estate rehabs, did some rentals and wholesales uh, as I was trying to learn the wholesaling game. Um, I quickly realized that the wholesaling side of the business was more scalable, focused on that heavy, and uh, over the six years had exponential growth. Um, in 2019, we will have purchased uh, over 200 houses for wholesale, as well as running a real estate brokerage that'll do 60 million plus in transactions. Um, we started and have since sold a residential property management company, and we've made a big transition into commercial real estate lending. I'm sorry, commercial real estate deals. We made a big transition into commercial real estate deals. Um, we own and manage over 110,000 square feet of commercial space, as well as 60 plus residential doors. And the reason I go through all this for you guys is to get into the mission of this podcast, the real reason that I'm here. This is for next level thinkers. We're gonna be talking about the newest ideas, the most innovative stuff. We're gonna be talking about the one and 2% difference, the it factor, the edge, the stuff that really makes some investors great while other investors fail. We're gonna be digging deep into work-life balance, mindset, um, we're going to be having interviews with some of the top folks in the industry, both in the residential and commercial real estate investing sectors, uh, as well as high-level finance guys, maybe even tech guys that have, have scaled big businesses. If you want to be the best investor that you can be, and you want to get opened up to folks that are doing huge things, how they think, how they make decisions, how they process data, you're in the right spot. Right, guys. So Kent Clothier here. Uh, we got the podcast going. Uh, bear with us a little bit. The audio through Zoom and the uh, and the video is a little bit glitchy, but I think um, a vast majority of the content was there. It's very, very solid. There's some really, really good takeaways there. So uh, enjoy. Here we go. Cool. You ready to rock? <laughs> rock it. Sweet. Ali, you good? I'm all. It's it's rolling. Everything is good. Perfect. Awesome. Well, welcome to Level Up Real Estate Investing Podcast. Super, super excited here. We got Kent Clothier um, out of San Diego, um, you know, with Real Estate Worldwide, Memphis Invest, Cribs, if you name a few. Um, thanks for having, thanks for uh, coming on here, Kent. Absolutely, brother. Anything for you, you know it. Absolutely. Terrific. Yeah. So we were just in Cabo um, for the uh, Billionaire Boardroom, which was an absolutely epic time. We were just talking about that. Fantastic folks. Um, just, you know, really, really good time. We did zip lining and uh, I guess repelling and uh, just some, some really, really yeah, cool. How, how was that repelling, Rob? How'd that work out for you? I made it to the bottom. <laughs> yes, you did. I was, uh, I was, I was terrified. I was. Uh, I could tell, dude. That was so great. I mean, you made the you made the mistake of looking down before you got up there. Terrible decision. You know, I really didn't think it was going to be that intimidating. I was like, I got this. It's not that big of a deal. And then you kind of come off that ledge and you look down. It's two hundred feet. And I just, I just felt my heart drop. It's oh no. It was Ugh. amazing watching you sweat it. Was I mean, I made I. The only way I got through it is I literally never one time did I ever look down. Even when I was standing up on the perch there, I always kept looking out. Even when I swung around, I never looked down. I never got that feeling rushed over me. Yeah. Because I knew if I did, I would probably wouldn't go. You guys would never let, let me live it down. <laughs> Seema's down there just hollering up at you. Come on, honey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no, that was a huge, huge mistake. But it, uh, we made it down. It was a blast. Uh, I wouldn't do it again. But uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was so much fun, though. 
But uh, but yeah, so thanks for coming on. Um, let's just jump into it and try and keep it keep it relatively short here. And you know, I mean, one of the big things that that we're talking about, one of the big premises, is I think you know about the new podcast. It's really about folks that like talking to folks that are trying to scale their their residential business, trying to scale it up and and you know do more, get past just them or them and a partner or them and an assistant, and like build out a team, do more, do bigger things. Also scale into commercial real estate investing and other kind of bigger aspects of real estate. And obviously that's something that, that you've been able to do numerous times. So I'm really, really excited to have you on and um, really kind of dig into, you know, your journey and, and some of the little things that people probably don't know about you. Probably some of the things that people aren't aware of or struggles that you've had to get through that were maybe big turning points in your career um, or turning ports points in, in, a, in an individual business per se, or something, you know, things of those, that nature is kind of what we're really going to be digging into. So um, let's jump into it. Give us just a, a real quick overview or kind of about your, uh, your journey, getting into real estate, getting into business. Yeah, yeah, man. So I, I started in business when I was 17. I was in a grocery business, um, flipping truckloads of groceries, buying and selling truckloads of groceries and, and got really, really good at it. A little arbitrage business that became uh, very, very successful at a, at a very young age. Uh, I was looking back now, I'm extremely fortunate that I lost all of that by the time I was 30 years old, right after I turned 30 years old. Um, and, and, you know, built a business at that point up to almost $1.8 billion a year with the help of hundreds and hundreds of people, if not thousands. Um, and like I said, ultimately ended up losing it all, um, which was, which was a, a shock to the system to say the least. But ultimately led me here, right? I basically, uh, when I was 30 years old, or 32 years old, I should say, I, I spent a couple of years really struggling and trying to rebuild that business back and ultimately failed at doing that. And so when I was 32, I got, attended my very first real estate investing seminar in West Palm Beach, Florida, um, and got, was just desperate enough, my back up against the wall enough that I, that I, Went and took a lot of action out of what I had just learned inside of that. Um, invested in a wholesaling course, learned how to wholesale. Uh, ironically, it was very, very similar to what I had just done in the grocery industry. So it kind of made sense to me fairly quickly. Um, and then I turned it into a business, right? A lot of people, a lot of people when they get into wholesaling or into real estate, it's, it's really treated more as a hobby or it's certainly treated more as a, a job, just a way of replacing income. Um, and I looked at it very differently, very quickly, that this was an opportunity to build a really big business, uh, started putting systems, processes, people, all that kind of good stuff in place over several, several years. And, you know, as, as fate would have it, my father and brother were kind of doing the same thing in other cities. One thing led to another, before you know it, Memphis Invest had been born. Um, and we were bringing in investors from all over the country to start buying properties inside of Memphis, Tennessee. And so now Memphis Invest, you know, buys and sells roughly a thousand houses a year, still very, very successful today. And then I became extremely passionate about not only doing the deals, but also showing people how to do the deals. And so I started the company uh, back in 2008 called Real, Real Estate, oh God, Real Estate Worldwide. <laughs> uh, been in business now for 11 years. And, and, you know, we've roughly sold our systems and, and techniques and, and trainings to over 50,000 people now over the years. And we've got, a lot of different ways we help people, whether that is through software, whether that is through coaching, through masterminds like yourself and, and um, really helping them, you know, kind of blow their business up. So something I'm extremely passionate about now, I'm not, I'm not as, as passionate about actually getting down and doing the deals as, as I once was, but I can tell you that as of late, and you and I have spent some time talking about it, I've become more passionate about getting out there and starting to do bigger deals, right? Getting away from, not getting away from, but getting, my own personal uh, satisfaction getting more and more into big commercial stuff and, and multifamily stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, man, there's some huge takeaways there. So obviously having that much success young at such a young age, 1.8 billion in, in revenue. Is that, I hear that right? Correct. Holy cow. Yeah. And then obviously having that come to an abrupt stop and then having the mental, you know, fortitude and the middle mental ability to be able to power through that. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. How, uh, well, I don't know I don't, that I actually, I don't know that I actually had it. Let's just put it to you that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're forced um, into it, huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, um, 
that was an extremely challenging time for me. Um, I was uh, a shell of myself, that I, of the guy that I am today, right? Back then, I, basically my entire life had been wrapped up inside of a business, all of, you know, as in a, what happens to a lot of guys uh, and girls, I assume, but I definitely know about guys, is that a lot of my self-worth was tied up into what I did, right? My profession, mm-hmm. what I was, what, how I provided for my family. And ultimately, going through that process of, of losing my, my identity and my way of producing income and my way of creating value in my life was a massive shock to my system. Right? Sure. Anything I'd ever known was suddenly gone. But not only was it gone, then, you know, because I was so full of crap at the time um, that I burnt every bridge on the way out the door, right? So not only was, not only was I, uh, the business falling apart, but I was making sure that it had no way of ever getting resurrected, right? Like an idiot. And so those two years were very, very challenging for me. I was in a really, really dark place and ultimately got to a place where I had nowhere to turn. I mean, I basically had done everything I could to destroy everything I had. And so I I arrived at real estate because I had nowhere else to go. It was just that simple. So, um, you know, at some point, you talk to enough real estate developers and like I said, I was in commercial real estate finance for a long time. So you talk to enough folks that are in high level commercial real estate or whatever, it's like, it's not if, but it's when you just really face that big punch in the nose. Like when things get bad, it's just how it, how the world works. Right. So if it hasn't happened yet, it's probably a fair, fair time to start thinking about it and being prepared. So what are some of the biggest things you took out of that, that that you kind of, you know, use for some of the value that you've taken out of that, that you use going forward? Yeah. You know, when I was going through it, I was not, um, I was not grateful for any of it, right? It was all happening to me. I didn't realize then, back then, that it was happening for me. Um, I, I, I was still in that victim mentality. Why me, why me, why me? Now, yeah. ultimately, lots of distance from it, I've realized it happened for me, right? I wouldn't be here, live the life I live, if, not, if all of that had not transpired. Um, so that was a huge lesson for me, is, is understanding that when tough times come on, because they, they, they certainly will, that... Um, it isn't happening to you. It's happening for you. There's something that's, there's something waiting, right? There's some big, um, there's something big for you on the other side of this. And so now it's allowed me that every time I fall into difficult times, which inevitably happen, um, I have the, I have the mental fortitude now, you know, to your point earlier, I definitely have the mental fortitude now to push through anything. I mean, I know I can survive anything. I know that I have what it takes. I know that it is not a matter of, of, having all the answers at that, at that particular moment. It's just a matter of continuing to push, continuing to value what, what really matters, family and friends, and bringing value to other people's lives, trying to create impact out there. And nobody can ever take all that away from you. Nobody can take that knowledge and all that wisdom and all that experience and all those people out of your life. Um, and if you have all that stuff, then you can survive anything. You'll get through it. That, that, you know, a lot of time, a lot of distance, a lot of energy uh, has gone into figuring that out over the years. That's probably the single biggest thing that I do not allow really difficult times to melt me to the ground like they used to. They just, I, I actually kind of welcome it now. I know I got it. Just, yeah. I mean, I have supreme confidence in myself that I'll figure it out. Well, that's huge, right? So, I mean, it's like essentially a learned skill. It's something that you've, <laughs> you don't look at it that way when you're going through it, but now that you have it, you've, you've got that quiver in your, in your sheath and you're ready to rock. So, an issue pops up or you going into a new business adventure, you know, stuff's coming at you. You know that there's going to be a strong headwinds. It's coming baby. And it's going to get rough (laughs) and it's it's going to get rocky and you're going to get tested. And you know, you've heard me say this before and I say it a lot is that I, I just clearly know that when I'm in those spots, the, the conversation I'm having with myself, the story I'm telling myself is so important because we all, we all tell ourselves a different story, but the story I'm telling myself is, you know, this is the kind of stuff that breaks my competition. It's not going to break me. And, um, and I got, I got what it takes to get through it. And largely more times than not in my life, that is, that has proven to be, um, true. Right. And so that gives me a lot of confidence. I'm not cocky by any stretch. I'm very humble when it comes to those tough times. But it, I look at them much more from a, from a perspective of gratitude, like I'm being tested, than I ever do as, oh, my God, like the victim mentality. Why me? 
And that's fantastic. And you portray that message. Um, I've heard you say it enough times that it really sits with me whenever I'm having a really hard time like that. I think about that. And it's like, Oh God, how are there this many things going wrong at the same time? And, and you know, for, you know, whether it be five minutes, an hour, a day, whatever it is, I finally immediately bounce back out of that and say, well, Hey, that, that's exactly right. This is when the competition quits. This is when everyone else has had enough. Hell yeah. That's one, that's not going to be me. And two, it's right. going to be them. So I'm, I'm twice as far ahead because they'll quit. Yeah, all, and I gotta, I won't all, and I keep going. all I got to do is stay, right? I just got to mm -hmm. stay. I just can't keep fighting. If I just keep fighting, then if everybody else is willing to quit and I'm not, then I'm going to win. Hundred percent. If yeah, if that's the only thing that's taken out of this. That for the people listening, that's going to be huge because one of those things you got to hear something three, four, five, seven times for it to really stick. But take that piece away because that's that's just unbelievable. Um, and I, I still use it to this day. I mean, we, John and I joke about that. We're like, "Fuck, this is where they're going to quit. It's, we're in a whole heap of mess." So everyone else is going to quit when they get here. Let's keep going. That's huge. Well, cool, cool, cool. So. Um, real estate worldwide, switching gears a little bit, real estate worldwide kind of, I guess, came out of the, came out of the ground in 2008, you said. Yep. So, um, how has that, how's kind of been scaling that? How's that gone? Or how, you know, what, what, what's that path look like? Well, we've, all, we've, we've always scaled businesses very organically, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with few exceptions, there are exceptions, but with few exceptions, we've scaled businesses organically, meaning that. As uh, the business needed growth, as opportunities presented themselves, we addressed the markets you know, accordingly. And so Real Estate Worldwide started as a company that was selling a, a brand called 1-800-SELL-NOW. Um, and then quickly, we were doing some things inside of our own real estate business where we were dealing with, uh, we were mining data and creating lists of cash buyers that we would, we would ultimately sell product to. And as we were doing that, it became kind of, evident that um, other people needed those services. And so we automated those services, released them out there, productized it. And before you know it, we had a, you know, we had a best selling product that was all, that was all over the, uh, that was all over the, the industry called Find Cash Buyers Now. Uh, and ultimately that led us to private lenders and motivated sellers and just on down the line. And, mm -hmm. and so our, our scaling has always come from the demand of our customers, right? There was so much pressure being put on us to provide more value to get gain more access that um, we were kind of being pulled along. We, I've never experienced, well, I mean, again, I, had, I shouldn't say it never, but with few exceptions, I, I've never, I haven't experienced a lot of trying to force scale. Um, you know, there are ways to do that. And certainly we, we, we do those and we know how to do it. You know, whether it's bigger transactions, more transactions or built on businesses, you know, the three primary ways. Um, we are, we are really looking at it as, all right, our customers demand more value from us. Uh, they look at us from a place of um, authority, right? Where they, they're leaning on us because we can bring more to them. Sure. Um, and, and therefore we do. Memphis Invest was the exact same way, right? Memphis Invest started out as just wholesaling houses. Yeah. Um, then we started wholesaling houses to people out of state and quickly figured out that as we were wholesaling people, to, you know, if I'm wholesaling a house to, that's in Memphis, Tennessee, to somebody that's in Boca Raton, Florida, the services that they need in order to come back and transact with me again become really obvious, right? They needed somebody that was going to uh, help with the rehab. They needed somebody that was going to help with insurance and loans and property management. And so those things kind of became evident really quickly that in order for us to get people to transact, more frequently with us, we needed to solve more problems for them. They were more than willing to push on us to make that happen. And then before you knew it, Memphis Invest had become a turnkey operator. And this is, turnkey is a, a common phrase now, but we were the ones that invented it back in the day. It didn't exist. Um, and so I think that from a scaling standpoint, it, you, you, if you look at how you can provide more value to your client, in other words, your transaction ultimately leads to other transactions, mm -hmm. especially in real estate. Yeah. Right? If you flip the house, there's something else that comes behind it. It might be private money. It might be rehab. It could be whatever, insurance, whatever. Those are really obvious ways to start scaling a business because the customer is going to transact. And they're going to do that anyway. You might as well try to provide those services for them, much like what I just explained in, in our businesses. Absolutely. So you just started <laughs> layering in value add. <laughs> 
bolt on businesses that can, that can directly align and, and just, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you know, basically vertically integrating, that's what you're talking about, right? I mean, yeah. you basically up and down the supply chain, what's going on that you can, that you can provide um, because it exists already. A lot of people think of scaling as well. I need to hire more employees. I need to do more transactions and et cetera, which is all still, you know, very true, but it's not the only way. Um, and, and a really obvious and easy way is understanding what happens before and after every one of your transactions and how you can use those levers to create more value and get a piece of those transactions as well. Not to mention there's, you know, a lot of times in scaling a business, it could be something as simple as looking inside of your own business and trying to figure out what are the, what are the expenses you have inside of your business that you can quickly turn into income. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you may have something inside of your business, like a transaction coordinator. I'm just going to use it as an example, but there are plenty of, of people in your market today. You guys have transaction coordinators that handle all this, this clerical administrative work as it relates to a transaction. Well, there's plenty of people in your market right now that don't have that and nor do they ever plan on having that, but they will gladly pay you for those services. Now you're paying somebody three, $4,000 a month, which you could easily get somebody else to pay you that exact amount and more. And suddenly your expense goes into revenue because you know, that's a way to scale. hundred percent. Yeah. Now you've got employees in the payroll that build this bad, badass back office for you and, and someone else is paying for them Absolutely. You know, for working Absolutely. a third There's of their time. There's little ways and little levers, you know, little things to pull when it comes to scaling a business. And, and a lot of that, like I said, going back to my original point, just comes from demand from the market, right? If you're paying attention, the market will tell you what it wants to buy from you. Absolutely. Now, I remember when, uh, gosh, I was still in, in finance and I was working out in the mornings and I was listening to uh, the Real Estate Guys podcast. Um, there weren't that many real estate podcasts back then and, and they were the, the one. And I remember hearing all the Memphis Invest stuff like, you know, live where you want to live, but invest where the numbers make sense. Or is that the, isn't that the, the yeah. is it, that's still Absolutely. the catchphrase? It is. It's exactly what we do. It worked. It's stuck. <laughs> well, I'm, that's why I'm here in San Diego, California. That's right. Live where you want to live. So cool. So, I mean, obviously you've got a lot of big things going on. Memphis Invest is booming. REWW, um, Cribs, you know, that's, that's up and going. And, and uh, I know you're kind of right in the crups of, of getting that thing rolled out. But like, as you've had more and more success, well, you know, as you had more and more success and you're kind of going into these new things, what is it that like continues to motivate you to keep pushing forward um, versus taking the foot off the gas, like to, to keep pressing? Man, you know, I, 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 I'm about to turn 50 and I can tell you that the way I look at things, it's, it's, it's like, dude, what's the alternative, right? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I love what I do. Uh, I think I'm good at it. Uh, and I, I am passionate about helping people. I'm passionate about unlocking the things that are going on inside of them that are preventing them from going up and, and creating you know, real wealth and, and a real business and, and not only changing their lives, but their kids' lives and their grandkids' lives. I, I just, I know how valuable that <clears> is to people. Right? And I know, I know how big of an, uh, of an asset that has been to my life to have, you know, a father that uh, was an entrepreneur and basically showed me the way to do things as I was growing up and how much ultimately, you know, I look back and how much that changed the whole trajectory of my life. And knowing that you can have an impact on somebody and allow them to give that same gift to their kids, right? And ultimately their grandkids or whoever, to me, that's just really, really cool thing to be able to do. Um, I'm healthy. I, I, I have the knowledge. I have the wisdom. I have the drive. I know what I'm doing. I know how to do it. Um, I just, I, I don't, it would seem extremely reckless and irresponsible to me, just who I am and the way I'm wired to not try to wring everything out of every day that I possibly could. Mm -hmm. Some days that, that reflects itself in, you know, pouring everything I've got into my kids and my wife and traveling the world or going to Cabo with, guy, with you guys. So I can, but to not go and try to live a full life every single day, whatever that looks like, just seems very, very, very hypocritical. Um, and so I just go as, as hard as I can because I can. All right. I just don't, I don't, what's the alternative? I just don't see any alternative to it. I mean, there are people literally today that are praying for the kinds of problems you and I have, right? They want the kinds of problems that we have. 
And I'm just constantly reminded of that, that Jesus Christ, dude, thank God these are my problems. Thank God these are the situations I get to deal with. Thank God I get the opportunity to do this. How the hell would I not go for it every single day? Because it would seem just completely out of line and incongruent if I did. Uh, that's awesome. And what a fantastic perspective. I tell you, it, it's made a huge impact on me. So I appreciate it. I truly do. And I've seen folks just in the circles that we run with that, that it's had just huge monumental impact. So that's, that's awesome to hear. And it's just such a great perspective. So th- thank you for that. That's, that's I appreciate fantastic. That, yeah, for sure. Um, well, cool. So <laughs> I guess kind of coupling into that, and you know, one of the things you often hear people talk about is, you know, trying to stay up on their game and, and, you're the, you're the compilation of the five most successful people or the five people you hang out with is, is kind of what the, is a compilation of what you're becoming. Do you intentionally make efforts to, to hang out with more and more and more successful people as you kind of come up that, 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 that success I level? I, I do. I don't, I don't, what's interesting is I would, I would, I would describe myself as very introverted, somebody that's not, good, not very good around people, not very good at, at going out and meeting new people. So it's a struggle for me, um, but I can tell you that uh, I absolutely do push myself, right? And, and I, I realize that that I have to continue to get around people that matter. And by what I mean by that, they matter. That um, I can bring value to their lives, and they can bring value to my life, right? That there's something I can learn from them, something that that they're doing that I respect enough that I want to make sure I spend quality time with them. Yeah. And. I've had a good vehicle for the last couple of years in the find and flip summit and the scale and escape summit and making sure I invite people in to come speak and share their stories. People that I have a lot of respect for and that I want to get closer to. It's a great opportunity for me to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, guys like Ed Milet and Jesse Itzler and Bedros Koulian, you know, guys like yourself, um, Tony Hawk, I mean, Lo Silva, Ryan Stuman, and really – People I have a ton of respect for, and, and, and many others that, I, that I'm not even mentioning here, but, but it, takes, it takes part of a driving force for me doing those events is that, that very issue right there, is making sure that I have a platform that allows me to get surrounded by people and get introduced to people that otherwise may seem a little unattainable. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, it's a hell of a platform. They've all, translated. They've, all, they've all translated largely. Like I would consider Jesse Itzler a friend. Ed Milet and I text quite often. Um, you know, I've, I've had dinner with him. Um, I'll, I'll see Pedro Killian here very soon in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Steve Weatherford and I have become very good friends. I mean, there's, there's some really quality people. I just joined, uh, the hundred million mastermind with, with, uh, Dan Fleischman and Joel Marion and a lot of really high level people, uh, which is, which is a tremendous investment over a hundred thousand dollars or at a hundred thousand dollars. And so it's, um, it takes discipline, right? It takes commitment to trying to figure out how to get to that next level, but it is definitely mm-hmm. worth it. Oh, that's great to hear. So who do you think has been the, maybe the single biggest influence in your life in the last say 18 months? Obviously, you know, your family, your father, I'm sure has been big, but like in the last 18 months, is there anyone that's new, really stood a new out? Influence, a new influence. And I'm, I mean, he's probably been the same influence on a lot of people that just, um, I've gotten, you know, had the opportunity to get a little bit closer to him than most, but not as close as I would like to. It would probably be Ed Milet. Um, <laughs> I knew nothing about Ed two years ago um, and started listening to his podcast, started inviting him to come speak at my event. He's probably one of the most genuine people that you'll ever meet. Uh, he is exactly who you think he is. Mm-hmm. Um, speaks the truth. He's extremely impactful. He's very thoughtful. And he's been around enough to where he, he's got uh, a wealth of knowledge and a way of, of delivering his, his uh, message that is, literally like no one else I've ever met. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been fortunate. I've had a lot of people over the years make comments to me like, Kent, you have the ability to kind of just reach into my soul and kind of grab me and, and make me, you know, kind of cut through the, that is what Ed Milet does for me. That's awesome. Um, like I, I, when I hear him speak and what he's talking to, he's talking directly to me. He's a, he's had a profound impact on my life. That's, that's funny you say that. Um, I met Ed Milet through you um, at, I think it was find and flip. Um, mm-hmm. And man, I'll tell you what, there has not been one person or one podcast that I'd like to listen to more since then. I mean, he is, he, he just, he seems genuine as hell. His interviews are so good. He digs in so deep and gets to the, the really, really good content. Um, 
gosh, I can't wait to, I mean, hell, he doesn't know yet. He's in that, on this podcast, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, there, there's nobody, there's nobody like him. I mean, he truly is, um, he's a phenomenon, right? I mean, he is absolutely a phenomenon and it's, he has a gift, uh, and it's as sincere as it, as, as it comes out there. I mean, it's, it's just shocking how good he is at what he does and he does it without even trying. Oh man, his, uh, problem solving podcast where it just kind of breaks down, like how do you solve a problem and how as you become more successful, the bigger problems you have. I mean, I probably listen to that thing 20 times, literally anytime I'm like dealing with something major, I listen to it two or three times that next morning before I go into the office, before I got to solve it. It's like, okay, yeah. bam, bam, he's bam, just bam. Got, bam. He's just, just such a, I mean, and there've been, there's been several others, but I mean, that is a guy that I can tell you, um, he is, he has really, really rocked me over the last 18 months in a great, in a great way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, I was joking about it earlier, but he doesn't know it yet. But Ed, Ed's going to end up on here. No, <laughs> set a goal. Uh -huh. Six months, I'll get him on here. Uh, well, very, very cool. Well, cool. So this is this is something I think about a lot, right? So there's like so many folks out there, especially like hanging out with you and these masterminds we're involved in. Like you can always tell there's just there's something about certain people. It's a one to two percent difference that they apply to just any individual thing they do in their life that just is the difference that makes them successful, makes them who they are, and it makes everyone else who's not successful who they, who, you know, who they aren't. Um, what do you think that is about you? Like, what do you do one to 2% better than everybody else that puts you in the position that you're in? That's a great question, dude. That's a really good question. Um, what do I think I do better one to 2%? I think I, um, I think I'm extremely intentional. Um, that most, you know, and, and by the way, I, I, it's ironically, it's an area that I feel like I can always improve upon, but I don't, there's not a lot of, um, wasted movement in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm extremely aware of time, as you know. Sure. Um, and I, I'm, ex which makes me very, very intentional with the calls I'm going to make, where I'm going to spend my time, where my efforts are going to be. I try to, as I've gotten older, I, I, I've tried to become a, a lot better listener mm -hmm. and tried to understand the, the, the viewpoints from, and understand issues from multiple angles. And that, um, which then makes me willing to take action and move very, very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And so most people I think that I know have a tendency to get way too caught up in the, the thinking about uh, all the different scenarios, all the different outcomes, you know, they're very analytical when it comes to it. I'm an action taker, right? I push and I push quickly. Uh, I take in just enough information to feel confident in, in the decisions that I'm making, but I'm, I'm not afraid of making it. And if I, again, I was kind of trying to think about it. That's probably, that's probably it is that I'm not afraid of the decision, right? And I'm not afraid to make it. And I'm not afraid to move quick and, and do what it takes to see that, see that decision move through in a very, very intentional way. I think a lot of people back away from the decisions. Sure. No, that's a great answer. Well, and you, you kind of answered out of the gate, I think unintentionally where you were saying, Hey, listen, here's what I do and I could do it better. So you're already self-critical saying I can be better at what I do. So like in answering it, you were, you were analyzing internally and saying, okay, this is what I think I do, but I could be better at it. So you're always getting better as you kind of yeah. build into yeah, it. I mean, you, it's, know? It's, you know, I don't spend a lot of time looking back, I'm very present. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to keep moving the keep moving ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Again, the whole, the whole um, concept of time for me is very, very real, right? I just do not believe in wasting it in any way, shape, or form. And I realize that while I'm sitting here thinking about what I could have, should have done back then, or what I could have, should have done moving forward, I'm wasting the moment that I have now. Sure. Yeah, there was. Uh, I don't know where I heard it, but it's like. I always say like worrying is like, like sitting on a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it, it doesn't get you anywhere. You know, just no, kinda... you go around and around and around and then right back here. Exactly. So let's just make a decision to move. Yep. Incorrect. Well, cool. So um, I guess kind of digging into it a little bit more. So what routines do you follow every day or, or do you have any routines you follow every day that kind of help get you prepared for the day, get you going, that really kind of help you jump yeah. off? What do you do? Now, a couple of things I do that I think have, have really proven very valuable for me is, is one, I, I time block. I mean, my, 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 um, pretty much every minute of my day is, is blocked, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, 
from the moment I get up until the moment I go to bed, it, I, my schedule is planned out, right? I don't, I, I book the time on there for my family. I book the time on there for my wife, for my lunch, you know, all those kinds of things, things that most people just kind of are very cavalier about. I'm just not, I try to keep it all very, very regiment. Now that doesn't mean that it always works out correctly, but it, but it isn't for a lack of trying. Sure. Um, right. I'm trying to be very disciplined when it comes to it. My morning routine is always very straightforward. I get up early. Uh, I try to read in the morning before I do anything else. Um, I try to get a little bit of me time. I go to the gym every morning. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to kind of get the blood flowing. I, I do not eat before they go to that gym. I just kind of makes me feel better by just going there on an empty stomach and kind of burn those calories and get, and get kind of, like I said, all that energy going. Mm -hmm. I come back, I make sure I spend a lot of quality time with my kids. I take them to school. Uh, awesome. I basically, between you know the time I start the morning until 9.30 in the morning is there's no work that's going to get done there. Occasionally I break that, I'll have a conference call with somebody on the East Coast, whatever the case may be, but largely what I just said is, 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 is true. Uh, I try not to check any emails before 12 o'clock on mm -hmm. any given day, uh, because I know that what happens is that the moment I ch start checking emails, I start going down rabbit holes. Oh yeah. And ironically, I've trained my staff to where they clearly know, you know, do not, if, you want, if, it, if it's urgent, don't send it to them in an email before noon, right? If it's yeah. something that has texting, whatever the case may be, but don't send him down rabbit holes. So I'm pretty disciplined when it comes, comes to that kind of stuff. My family always comes first, which was not always the case. And my first, you know, business incarnation, the first half of my life, that wasn't the case. And, you know, I was an asshole that, that thought it was cool to, to neglect my family and go build a business. Sure. And so I made, made a commitment that I would never do that again. And so I just don't, um, everything that has a, that a, between the gym, between my kids, between that quality time in the morning, really kind of slowing down to make sure that I, that I'm, you know, I got it right. That, that really has the, the ability to center me. And so when I come into the office, I'm, I'm highly productive. I mean, it's boom, 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 moving through the meetings as fast as possible, getting people the information they, they need as fast as possible and, and moving the team ahead. Um, and then once I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I'm done. Um, but that, that's kind of my, you know, I'm, I'm pretty disciplined about my routine. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess we've only known each other for a few years now, three or four maybe now, but uh, that's something that I've noticed. Obviously, I didn't know you prior to that, but that you kind of have that work-life balance that you're, that you're very intentional about. And uh, I mean, that means something to me. I'm, I'm very big on that, you know. Um, yeah. I, could I spend more time at home? Sure. But I am very intentional about the time that I do and make sure that we have very good quality time and, and kind of make that work. Well, life's um, about, dude. Everything else is just bullshit. I mean, it's just that simple. Everything else is just... Yeah, you know, we think this is all cool and we think it's important and it is to a degree, but at the end of the day, I promise you, if it all went away, I mean, the only thing you would care about is your family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, young kids, so, I got, you know. You might as well be intentional with that, right? Just. 100%, yeah. And I mean, like, I know what you're, I think your youngest daughter is about the same age as mine. Is she six or seven? She's five, yep. Five, okay. Yeah, so I've got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, so I knew it was right in that, that mix, so. But yeah, and it's like, it's just a really fun age and there's a lot of great things and she loves coming to the office and doing stuff and, and I can incorporate that quite a bit. But yeah, you just got to be intentional and, and that, that's a big, big piece for, for me and I knew that was for you too. So that's really cool to hear. Um, so uh, kind of get on to the next one, kind of wrap this thing up here. What, what do you think about, like what really gets you excited these days? Like what, what is it, whether it's a business adventure or a personal adventure, like what is it that's like, Hey, when you're, when you're down in the, in the, in the crap and you're powering through this and you're saying, thank God, it's the problem I get to solve. But like, what is it on the other side of that spectrum that really powers you up to get you excited to get going? Um, well, probably two things. One, I'm, I'm really, really excited. I'm excited about, you know, the real estate industry and how all of its technology is disrupting it. So, so That's you know, kind of real fun, yeah. right. It really is fascinating to me to see because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a business junkie um, but it's fascinating to me to watch kind of in real time just the the seismic shifts that are happening in this industry right that to me that is just so freaking cool and to know that that we can play some role in that some way shape or form is really really exciting um, because which kind of leads to the thing that I'm actually probably the most passionate about is that I just know you know we live in a world now where it's it's never been easier to um, create the American dream. There's a lot of people out there that, I mean, 
when I got in residential real estate, this was this was this was tough stuff, right? I mean, you went door knocking, you went door to door to try to figure out how to buy somebody's house. There was no no press a button and get <laughs> data feeds and you know here's the cash buyers and none of that shit existed. No, none of that was out there. Um, and so to see how technology and business and the evolution of all of this has just made the opportunity get closer and closer and closer to the consumer to where you, know, you have a 21 year old kid that could go out and become a millionaire tomorrow and forget about real estate. I mean, it's just in anything, um, whether they're going off and creating YouTube videos or TikTok videos or creating an e-commerce <laughs> site or whatever the case may be. To me, that is just such a cool thing. And to know that, that, you can, there's, there's so many people that if they'll just take the time, their lives can be changed in such a profound way. That's something I'm really, really passionate about. I'm really passionate about, about helping people to unlock that that's inside of them, right? Because we all get caught in our own four walls. We all get caught in our own lives. And we all get caught in our own kind of the dogma of everybody else telling us what we can or can't do. But dude, it has never been easier than now to be successful. I mean, it is shocking how fast you can become, I mean, you could go, I, I was telling somebody this the other day. I mean, you can literally go on Craigslist and go to the free section of Craigslist and go pick up a couch, a table, a chair, a lamp, whatever, right off of Craigslist and turn around and put that thing on the Facebook marketplace or on eBay or right back on Craigslist. Go sell it for 100, 200, 300. Go do that four or five times a week and you got a $75,000 a year job. It costs you nothing. And it's just like, holy shit, this is an amazing time where it's stuff like this is so freaking easy to do. To me, that's something I'm really passionate about is helping people unlock what, what's really possible inside of them to just get out of their own way. Oh, that's so great to hear. I mean, you're 100% right. It's crazy. I remember I was, I was like freshman year in college. My, my freshman year college roommate reminded me of this the other day where like, I was trying to like find any way to be entrepreneurial while I was in college, which was probably less of a thing back then. You know, now it's, right. it's, it happens, you know, Facebook's born out of college and all this stuff. But like back then, like it just didn't happen as much. And I was like looking at making a spread on 1-800 numbers. There was some, some crazy way to do that, some arbitrage on that. And it was digging through it. And I was thinking about that. I was like, man, there are so many great ways and easy ways to, to, to make money on that these days. I mean, hell, you can just go find a cool new product that not that many people know about and then just go and market it on social media for a dollar or two more and with, with a following and then just make that spread. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and, and folks are what killing what it. That it's yeah. just, it's a, it is a race to zero. I mean, and just that, that compression is coming down and just making it easier and easier and easier and easier for things to happen for people and knowing what that unlocks for somebody in their life, just the entrepreneurship is, is just something I'm, I, I just love. I think, it's, I think it's just such a cool phenomenon when people can begin to control their own destiny. Uh, I think that's just a cool thing to, to be a part of. It's great to hear. That, that hits. That resonates. Cool. All right. So um, one last question. What book or podcast do you really, really like that you don't think many people know about? Like, What's one that you know, everyone follows? you know, um, good to great <coughs> and, and, uh, you well, know, some of those great I, hold on, I'm sitting right here because I literally carry it around with me and, uh, I've read it probably, I don't know, I think I'm on my fifth or sixth time. The book called Blitz Scaling. Blitz Scaling. Okay. That's a new one for me. This is, uh, by Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. Yeah. Telling you, dude, I keep it by me. I can't even tell you in terms of I've read this book and given it away. It's this book is is just a phenomenal read. I love that book. And then um, you know, the book I always recommend to everybody um as well that that is not a business book, but is a great book when it comes to just getting this right and helping you to snap out of things very very quickly. You can read the whole thing in two hours. It's called The Alchemist. Okay. The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Um, those two books, I'm telling you, if you just had those two books and you read those over the next 30 days, mm -hmm. you'll definitely think. Okay, so The Alchemist and Blitz Scaling. Got you it. You got it. All right, there we go. 
Well, cool. Thanks a lot for having us on. This was fantastic. I mean, there was some really, really good stuff there, some stuff that, hell, I feel like I've known you pretty well and, and I, I've learned. So this has been fantastic. Uh, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, brother. I'm here always. Absolutely. All right. Well, have a great one, Kent. Peace. Talk Holy hell, guys. That was a fantastic interview. I'll tell you what, to be at age 30 to 32, to be running a company that, that does $1.8 billion in revenue and to have it go to zero, and then to have the mental fortitude to power through that and start up numerous additional companies that are very successful and to be able to run and have the perspective that he has is just beyond me. So um, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I really did. I learned a lot about a guy that I knew really well. Um, I learned a lot of new stuff, a lot of really, really cool details and, and good takeaways that I can use going forward. I hope you guys did too. So, uh, all right. Till next time. See you guys soon. Hey guys, as always, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Bottleneck uh, Real Estate Virtual Assistants. These guys are fantastic. We've been using them for years in our business. They've really helped us scale. Um, you know, they can handle really any task related to real estate, whether it be for the investing side, real estate agents, lenders, but specifically we use them for our contract to close process, our transaction coordination, also for phone and email correspondence. We uh, really use them for, for uh, working with insurance, the insurance company, working with utility on and offs, dealing with, uh, with anything in our CRM. Um, graphic design. I mean, really anything that you can need, they work really, really well with that. Uh, and the also really big benefit that this group has is they help with onboarding and tracking um, for that process. So they've got folks here locally in the States that can help build out some of your systems and processes, whether it be contract to close or contract coordination, um, kind of define the different steps that are necessary when the virtual assistant needs to contact who on that process. And then also um, the folks here can kind of set you up with a tracking system so that the virtual assistants are responsible for updating the tracking forms, providing those tracking forms to you to make sure that everything is, is going smoothly and, and staying on course. Probably one of the, the best pieces that, that this group can really do for you. But hopefully you guys like them as much as we do. If you want to get in touch, it's bottleneckrealestate.com, bottleneckrealestate.com, and uh, I think you uh, will be very happy with them. If you've got some good quality content out of that, if you think it would help anybody, please go to iTunes or SoundCloud or, or whoever you're listening to this on and subscribe to the podcast. Also, please give us a five-star rating. It really helps get us out there. If you do subscribe and give us a five-star rating, take a screenshot of it, email it over to info at robertheider.com, Robert, H-E-Y-D-E-R.com, and register for you guys to win a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with myself or one of our guests. They were nice enough to give up some of their time, so uh, thank you for that. Also, please follow us on, on social media, Robert underscore Heider at Instagram, Robert underscore Heider at Instagram. We'll drop some really quality content there. Also, I almost forgot, if you guys want a free commercial real estate guide and commercial real estate analysis tool, just go to the website, robertheider.com, fill out that brief little form, and we'll email that over to you. It's a really, really good tool just to be able to analyze deals quickly, understand kind of what's going on, see if it's actually a deal. All right, guys, thanks. Until next one.